Hello, this is Rob here from robcoven.com and I'd like to show you another way to install WordPress. Now we're going to install it manually. Here is our website at nurahnash.com and as you can see it's empty, it doesn't have anything there and here is our cPanel. So in the cPanel what we want to do is to create a new database for WordPress and we also have to create a new database user and link the user to the database. This is the only thing we have to do in cPanel and after that WordPress basically installs itself. So let's go to MySQL databases which is under databases in the cPanel. It's also called MySQL but I say MySQL. So in there we create a database name and create database. Go back and then we need to create a username and a password and then click create user and go back again and lastly we need to add the user we just created to the database we just created and click all privileges and make changes. Go back and that's it, that's all we need to do in cPanel. Next step is to go to wordpress.org and click either here or here to download WordPress and then we have to click this again and download the most recent version of WordPress. This is what I've downloaded at the WordPress site and I'll unzip that and here are all your WordPress files and you need to copy all of these up to the root of your site and you need to do that with an FTP program and I would suggest you use FileZilla. So if you Google FileZilla and then click on FileZilla-project.org and download FileZilla for Mac or PC. And here is FileZilla and once you have FileZilla loaded go to File Site Manager and then I would click New Site and then enter three things that you'll get from your host. First of all the host name, leave those two as is, go to Normal and then the username and the password that are given to you by your host and that will come in a welcome email. So I've connected to Nura's host and this is what it looks like inside her host and what we've got to look for is public HTML and there it is, we'll double click on that and there we've got one file called cgi-bin and if you look at her site that's what you can see there. So what we need to do is copy the contents of that WordPress directory that's on our desktop. We'll select all that's there and copy that over to the public HTML. Okay, so that has all uploaded now and in the public HTML folder we have the contents of what was in the WordPress folder that we downloaded from the wordpress.org site. So now if we go back to our website neurohnash.com and refresh we get straight into the WordPress installation and in order to get this to work we have to fill in the username, password and database name that we created in cPanel earlier. So we'll click create a configuration file and let's go. And as you can see from the MySQL databases in the cPanel that they add a prefix to the database name and the username. So it's important you remember to put that prefix in when you fill out this bit. And the password you created, the database host is sometimes localhost, in this case it is, but if you're unsure of that, you need to contact your host. And the table prefix, let's put a few letters in there for security. So we'll submit that, and that has all worked, so we'll run the install. And now we've got to give a site title and username and password. Remember you can change these later. Enter the email so you get a copy of that username and password for your records. And click install WordPress and log in. So now you can enter the username and password you created a couple of screens back when we were doing the installation and log in. And there is the back end of WordPress. This is where you create your pages, your blog posts, pretty much everything. You can load plugins, add users and create menus, sidebar widgets, all sorts of good stuff. And now if we go to the front end of the website, neurohnash.com, there is our default WordPress theme loaded and we're ready to start creating our new site. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. This has been Rob from robcoven.com. 
goodbye.